there's a couple of fun little projects I've put together. I have, um, because with OSC and how it's program set, you have to have a program running on your computer. So you, you have kind of two options of building something creative and cool, which is build it all in Avatar on uh, Unity's um, uh, animator or build it with code in mind, assuming that someone's going to have that so that they can do it. So like face tracking is something where they, they would need code running and like, I don't know, a simple little like avatar prop is something where they probably don't need code running. Um, I, I've done both in most cases. I have fun avatar props. Like on this guy, I have a whole... Hello everybody, welcome to, back to Metaverse Degen. I'm lying. I'm old man Raptor, and yes, I'm back, and I'm, the, the nurse gave me a good shot. And our guest is... That'd be you, sir. I am Catboy. Hello, Catboy. Thank mm. you for joining us. It's very much appreciated to have you on. Yes, we appreciate uh, What is yeah. it? Yep, we appreciate it. What does you do here in VR chat and the internet? Uh, I am mostly someone who teaches people how to make avatars and creates crazy nonsense along the way. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh. That's, that's the summary, <laughs> summary of what I do, mostly. Fair enough. So how'd you get into VR and that avatar creation and, and the like? Uh, I I started getting into VR, like, I don't even remember how long ago. I think it was 2016 or something when the DK1 oh, wow. originally came out. And I was like, I need it. I need it right now. Couldn't afford it. <laughs> Should have bought it. Couldn't afford it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't until, I think, 2016. 2018, 2019, that VR chat started to actually exist at all. Uh -huh. And when I actually started playing the game, I I mostly found it as an interesting experiment to try fun full body techniques. Ooh. But um, learning everything I possibly can about that, it wasn't until Avatars 3 really came out that I actually started getting into making content because I was like, I don't know how any of this works. And a couple friends thankfully helped me along the way with every single question I asked them, being like, how do I use a material? Help, please, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just over time, after I got kind of accustomed to it, I kind of felt bad for, like, asking so many questions to all my friends. Mm. So I just started contributing back by answering everyone else's questions. <laughs> well, that's really nice of you to do. Not a lot of people will go that far to help people, especially with a bajillion questions. Mm -hmm. What's the material? How do I get the shader to work? What is a mask? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, many, many different kinds of questions. And a lot of fun diagrams got made because people kept asking the same questions. Oh. Um, we even we even had like a little mini like FAQ on the VR chat official Discord that I was just maintaining with like useful information and our standard flow of how to actually get started. So much so that Tupper saw it and then just put it over here with his name on it. Thanks, uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate him. But <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's just it's just nice to like kind of go from point A to point B and just go from I don't know what I'm doing, help, help I don't help, please, to someone official in VR chat takes what I did and makes it something official. Well, that's actually well, that's honestly a really cool thing for you to do is to help people as, as much. What inspired you to get started on this whole avatar creation journey, or unity creation journey? Um... So I'm a I'm a programmer basically by trait. It's what I do most of my time and what I study pretty much all the time. And basically I I saw Unity and I saw like, oh, I could like make funny animations and stuff, and this is basically Turing complete, so I could just build whatever. Um and then it kind of blew up into wow, I could make so many crazy things now that OSC is now in the game and I could just program straight into the avatar with arbitrary data. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Was it easy for you to get into with that background? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm used to like looking at like half-baked 
barely finished documentation on stuff and just kind of figuring stuff out myself. And avatar creation is very much just kind of learning very tiny little tidbits and whatnot along the way and just building something that no one has made. Okay. So when did you start learning officially? Like you picked it up, be my guess. Um... Oh my god, when when did Avatars 3.0 come out? I avoided 2.0 like the plague. I just didn't I didn't like it at all. Oh. <laughs> um I <laughs> it was it was very simple for what I wanted to do. And um yeah, it was it was just just gestures. I think it was I think it was around um 2019 is when 3.0 came out if I remember right. If my dates are anywhere near correct. <laughs> okay. Um so has very yeah. Ooh, sorry. I apologize. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in over the last four years, has it got has how how much has changed in the last four years of Unity and all of that with the VR chat? Oh a ton. There there's so many things that have come out that have just absolutely changed VR chat entirely. Um there are like when I first started it was just gestures you could only interact via gestures then they had um which is basically just global values based on your controller um you then there was avatar parameters with 3.0 and now we have stuff like contacts and fizz bones and avatar dynamics and osc is all different event systems we can plug into to do absolutely crazy things Oh. Um, especially, especially even the knowledge base has expanded with like VR labs having a ton of presets and assets and a bunch of creation tools are better like Avatar 3 emulator and gesture manager which were not a thing when I first started oh. do you use those things now? those extra tools? oh yeah they, they i i like most people have like their vcc installed packages and whatnot mine has a scroll bar it's so long there's so many in there that i've installed because they Christ. save me so much time <laughs> oh so what is your opinion on the creator companion then i really like it i know a lot of people don't like it but i'm so used to just changing as things go that i i looked at it and went wow i don't need to set up a like 47 projects with like all my detail detail tools and i can just do that once and then have it here and install packages as i need them <laughs> hmm. that's nifty so i have a question yeah. for you again what has mm -hmm. been some of the hardest things for you to learn oh god um i <laughs> knowing me i struggle the most with like uh, shaders. I look at Toyomi's like giant chart of things you can do, and I just go, uh, base color material done. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's so many things. I look at it and go, I, it's too many things to dig into. I know what most of these words are, but I'm too lazy to learn any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't want to use how do I make a, a band aid for that situation? <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> don't want to use any colors i just throw it out and hope it makes a good art power project you know how that is you just throw the paint in the air and hope the wind catches it <laughs> yeah I, i'm underutilizing poyomi <laughs> to a large extent <laughs> oh i should have more but i just it's it's too much for me hmm. so for those who don't know what poyomi is what is poyomi oh poyomi is a customly written shader by i think I'm pretty sure their name is Poyomi, uh, <laughs> who uh, has like, like a million settings, million things. It's all modular and custom and compiles to just a brand new one-time shader whenever you hit the lock button. Um, it is hilariously performant and like it's one of the top two like most popular shaders in VR chat, effectively. Oh. If I remember correctly, is the other one Mochi? I think it is. It's either I think it's either Mochi or um, Little Tune. One of those two are like they're they're up there in like very popular status, but Poyomi seems to still be like number one from what I remember. Yeah. When I was first playing around with Unity, and I'm not good at it at all. Like my skills is probably the uh, 
unity equivalent to drawing stick figures. <laughs> uh, but Paobi is one of the ones I heard of most. <laughs> stick yeah, it, people. You had to go with fucking stick people. You couldn't get a little more detail and go, oh, I draw butterflies. They're so pretty. No, stick people. Oh, my gosh. Yes, of course, gotcha. stick people. Mm. I, my artistic ability and ability to use Unity is very minimal at best. I could upload avatars. I could maneuver a Poby a little bit. I do understand what a lot of those things are and what they do, but things break and then I give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> mo like, you know, because most of the time when I, when I use Poem, I'm just like, I, I basically just look at their documentation and go, what's the specific thing I'm looking for here? Uh, that one, that'll do. And it's most of the time that's basically it. <laughs> There's a lot of things in there um, that, like, most people are never going to use, but are cool patterns or effects that you can add to your avatar. Hmm. Well, that's actually really cool to know. At least we got some people in the community like Paomi or Mochi putting things out for people to use. Because it's like most people know how shaders work anyway or how to make them. Some people like yourself may, but not the average Joe in VR chat. Yeah, I, I've I've tried writing my own shaders, and I have a few projects that I'm kind of just poking at or doing in the background. But it is, it is hard. I appreciate people who make the custom shaders as they are they are today and as simple as they are for everyone, because doing like the math is hard. <laughs> it's a lot of random numbers, and you're just. What do any of these mean? How do I do this? What's a modulo? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only think close to that I've I have ever had experience with is not even involved with it. And it's probably a little bit of HTML back in high school because I got curious. Otherwise, I, it's like re, uh, reading Sanskrit to me. <laughs> yeah. It is. Hell, you don't it is know something it. else. You don't want... I try to read it and it'd be looking like you're doing a math problem. The monkeys figured it out before you, I did. <laughs> it, it's like trying to understand hieroglyphics to me. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, how no did you doubt. possibly figure out that you could just do that? The, <laughs> what are these? So let me understand. Math and symbols made, uh, gave you a galaxy, sh a shader, a galaxy shader. How? pretty much how i see it <laughs> yeah <laughs> they are they are very very nice so they're yeah. very it's very nice to like use very unpleasant to like try and learn <laughs> yeah i but i do have mad props, respect props for to them <laughs> oh yeah especially people like yourself and the people who make shaders a lot of i've had the pleasure of meeting a, a bunch of people on and off the air who are whizzes at this stuff and I can just barely wrap my brain around some of the terms they're throwing out, let alone how to do them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, <laughs> I, I, I luckily like the the thing I code in is mostly like OSC nonsense. Okay. And it is, it's usually a lot more simple compared to doing the massive amount of mathematics that you need to do over here. You just take some values, send it hope it works oh. <laughs> figure it out along the way <laughs> so what's the difference between the coding you do and the coding that's required to do shaders and unity projects so most of the coding i do is mostly in general like api structuring and um requests and stuff where i'm basically going hey server give me information and then i take that information and reconstruct it into a different package and i'm like hey vr chat here's some information uh where shaders are a lot of you know you have a million values and you kind of do a bunch of math and it then it looks really nice on the screen hopefully <laughs> okay assuming you got your values right <laughs> okay so i'm glad i know the difference where would one start to learn half the stuff you know for VR chat like Unity or Blender or any of that? Like, what is a good place for people to start? Uh, it depends on what you want to do. Pretty much, VR chat is the best place to pick a specialty and learn everything you possibly can about it, and then kind of barely know anything else. 
hmm. where me specifically, I know mostly just programming and how to interface with VR chat and how to make funny animations. Um, best, like, best resource. If, if you're, like, looking for, like, specifically coding nonsense, best is just to pick up a programming language, like in Python, C Sharp, or whatever, learn a bunch of the basics, and then just start messing around with it. Avatars have a bunch of stuff on them. As soon as you start sending data, it's pretty simple to kind of just figure out the rest. Okay. So what are some of the coding languages that VRChat recognizes within Unity? So um, in inside inside of VRChat, they have um, HLSL for shaders. There's their version of C Sharp called uh, U Sharp for worlds and stuff. But um, anything where you're trying to send data to VR chat runs through um, sort of an interface where it's basically like a it's it's basically the equivalent of like having handing handing mail to someone and that mail going to someone else in some other other country. You don't need to know any of the language in between it. It just does it for you. Okay. And so as long as you can send it the right mail, it doesn't care. <laughs> okay. That's that's really awesome and. May I ask the uh, how different are the are those different languages then between each other? Uh they vary. Most common languages have a standard um, structuring scheme called object oriented programming, where mm. it's like here's a thing, it has things in it, those things can have other things, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um Base, base, most modern languages use that. So, like, I mostly program in Python because it's simple and easy to just get something put together. But um, other languages are slightly different. It, it's, but it's still generally the same practices, and most programmers can kind of pick up one and go to the other and just know what's going on. Okay, that's some very great info to know. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> yes. I'm still lost, but hey, what the hell? I'll get, get the boat out. I'll go swimming. Do you have any questions to, for him to right clarify anything, butt. Raptor, if you're lost? Not, not really. You just keep learning and listening, and you pick up things as you go. So, you know, if you ever bump heads with him again, you ask the what, if I ever do that kind of thing and everything else like this, then you know who to go talk to. And, you know, they give you little pointers, and you you still got to learn it. You know, it's just it's like anything else. You know, you got to get your feet wet. If you don't get your feet wet and somebody else is doing the work, you're not going anywhere. You're just dicking around. So, yeah. Well, at least in terms of coding, at least there's some, some pretty good coding camp resources on the internet that's either free or fairly inexpensive to turn to with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, it in general just as long, it, as long as once you understand some of the basics of programming, interfacing with VR chat is surprisingly simple. Mm. They gave you a lot of the information just outright. A lot of it's just basic data that you can just read through, and it just it generally kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, it's just pretty visible across the board, and and it's not like interfacing with a server where you need to like do any weird like rate limiting or offsets or fall offs or whatever. It, you can just send it as much as you want and it'll attempt to do its best. <laughs> okay. Do you, s how much has changed within the creator community and your experience that over the, t over your time being involved with it, not necessarily the VR chat creator community coming out, but like people who make stuff, I guess. Um, I've like I've seen a lot of interesting different little little nooks get carved out from different people across the board of what is creative. VR chat's a very creative platform and you have a lot of people who are, you know, tool makers, tutorial makers, asset makers, people who just generally put things together, but there's also other communities like dance or I don't know, stories or music or whatever that you kind of grow up together. And then, you know, sometimes people have sort of crossovers. It's it's a very interesting, overarching like span of people, just all these different communities kind of coming together and making 
basically the better thing they possibly can. Mm. That was one of the things that honestly surprised me most is the sheer variety of people who do stuff in here. I actually kept coming here thinking, well, I don't know what who would make what, but I come in, oh, cool stuff. And then I went in and talked to people and they're like, oh, wait, there's more stuff. Wait, there's a rabbit hole here. It is awesome to see all this stuff and people make things here. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of those games where it, it kind of nails the most expensive free-to-play game that it, that I'm constantly learning something about every day. Mm. I can't name a single other game where I've had to literally learn a new thing every day just to like play the game. Mm. And it's also one of those but things. It's, it's fun. Yeah, it's also yeah. one of those things where you're not forced to pay for the thing or whatever it may be. It's like you just naturally, like for example, full body. You like maybe your half body just bring it in. You saw you or me playing. And full body's like, I want to do that. That looks cool. I want to move my feet. And then off he goes, spending four yeah. or five hundred bucks on full body. <laughs> yeah, that that was my first like dipping my toes in the VR chat. Was when I first got started. I wanted to like do full body stuff, and I'm like, that's so expensive. I don't want to spend that much on on full body. I mean, I have because <laughs> it's been six years, but I <laughs> I don't want to right away. So I, I went down the rabbit hole of what's the, the minimum viable product I can get to have my legs move or do something. Turns out, get some so like a couple of years ago, it was just get some software, um, point a webcam at yourself, and have like QR codes basically taped to your shoes, um, like f fancy QR codes. And then, wow, you can move your legs at one FPS. <laughs> it, you know, it, it was something. And I had since put together more and more like comprehensive le like more expensive things building up to a more full ecosystem of full body but it was it was very much a how cheap can i possibly make this because those are things that are so expensive over there yeah nowadays we have so much that is so much better and so cheap that oh yeah if you do a little bit of digging it is so easy to get into full body just just in the most basic sense mm. Especially with things like Tundra and Vibe out there producing a lot of full body stuff. And it's amazing how easily put together and usable they are. Like if you use PC VR with Steam and you get Vibe trackers, they almost almost quite literally plug and play. Little effort. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, though though anything that's laser tracked base station trackers are seamless across the board there there's like no issues a little jittering here and there but you, there's more exotic ways as well like slime vr is a different method of doing it yeah a little bit more manipulating but it's still pretty good there, there's other things like you have uh i i know the first couple of years i played the game i used just an xbox 360 connect to do funny leg tracking mm. um it was just a cheap alternative it only cost you like Twenty, thirty dollars, and was like eighty percent of the way there. Mm. I think the wildest thing I saw someone do to get full body is they strapped uh, wee nunchucks to their body. They got like a bunch of them, and then strapped all the all of them to their body, and then from there, it just worked. Yeah, I <laughs> I've done that before in the past. It was it was very interesting. <laughs> Hmm. Not not good, but interesting. Oh yeah, there's. What has been some yeah. of the cooler uh, VR chat full body techniques you've used? My my most convoluted and elaborate setup I've used was I had the connect just to get my general space positioning of where I was. I had the I had. Were they Joy Cons on my feet and hips so that I could get rotational data? Hmm. I had uh, Wii Motes with the Wii Motion Plus ad adapter, so they actually worked at all. Um, <laughs> on from for hand tracking for r r rotation on there and buttons that I can push. And then I had a had my phone attached to my head with a Google Cardboard and duct tape <laughs> so that I could look around. <laughs> this this was not good. It synced after like five minutes but it was something it was a proof of concept to say, say that i could do it 
That sounds and like all a... those individually are fine. It's just oh yeah, all those individually are fine. It's just not together. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> it's like too a much recalibration nightmare for that. to even set up in the first place. Like Joy Cons and barcodes and we connect. <laughs> what yeah, did you it, do? It to took run? me almost an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me an hour for five minutes of gameplay. Not recommended. Did it anyway. <laughs> That's nuts. Indeed. What what took the connection for all of that? Like between the Wii modes and everything else. It was a bunch of different softwares kind of running in collaboration. Uh, um most most of it was uh you had like driver for VR running. You had I think it was connected to VR, which has been renamed since the last time I've used it. There was um there was Riftcat for the head tracking nonsense like it was it was a bunch of mix mash of all the different softwares of the time just kind of thrown together to get the best results i could as quickly as i could oh just to let you know bud uh we're in the middle of a video interview <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just well, wanted to make sure. I, 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 I didn't realize I could come back later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just just want to make uh, make sure you do before. I don't know something. Tell you what, I'll just head on out. I'll see y'all later. I'll see maybe see a cat boy later. Sorry it's to good. interrupt. Yeah. Oh, no big deal at all. I no, just want to make fine. sure you knew. It's that's all. Thank you. Let me know. Thank you. Let me know. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Don't be sorry. It's a okay. I just want to make sure people know that way. Yeah, I don't, okay. Nothing wild is yeah. spoken. That, <laughs> That's they don't freak, that or they don't freak out. Going, wait a minute, you were doing a broadcast. Oh shit! I didn't want to be in that. You are now. <laughs> There's no way away from it. So. Well, good thing I play with name tra uh, name plates off. That way, if they, he didn't want to be involved, then he, no one's gonna know who he is. He's just a a gray robot floating around like this about the room. <laughs> How did you get yep, all the yeah. all of that software connected with a Google Cardboard? Because it just sounds like it's a lot to run. Most of it, most of it is luckily Steam VR has a good system for integrating these different things, and it doesn't really care what or where you send the data from as long as it is there mm. so you can kind of mix and match and put different things together and it'll figure it out um for an example like um i i used to use uh, rift s for a long time and then i ended up getting index controllers be before buying an index don't don't worry uh <laughs> it, <laughs> had, i had yeah had, had index controllers so i had some base stations those things are not immediately compatible with each other. So um, there's a piece of software that lets you just calibrate the two base stations together and uh, the two different play spaces together, and it just kind of works. A lot of things are kind of like that, where you can just kind of plug in different plugins or add-ons or whatever, and it just it just kind of works because Steam VR. Mm. Steam VR, I think, is one of the best things to happen to VR is Valve and Steam, because there's not a lot of there's Oculus, obviously, but they're like like comprehensive, easy to use VR applications. Steam's been, in my opinion, one of the better ones out there, and they do a lot of stuff, including research, which is wild. Oh, for sure. Oh, bef like I remember the time back in my day before uh, Steam VR was a thing, and it was, <laughs> it w it was chaotic to say the least. I like I remember when the DK one first came out, and it was just like a minecraft mod and like a handful of uh purpose-built games and that was it <laughs> wasn't until like steam vr really kicked off that it was actually usable <laughs> hmm. so did you use vr chat before steam vr was applied i did not i i pretty much it was like once they once they went live on steam and i think it was 2017 that i ended up like wanting to go play the game more um but it was but like before that when they were in their beta phase of like just testing the game back when it was just desktop <laughs> vr chat <laughs> effectively <laughs> for finding someone in vr was the rare oddity oh really um i i basically didn't i didn't play at all then i it was before my time 
Hmm. Interesting. So I wonder how things were back then pre pre steam, I guess. Cause it's, I'm quite fascinated. So I've heard some murmurs now and again by people's like, I've been here since 2014 and, and a couple of things, but not a whole lot. I know personally fascinating. Though. Um, not, not, not a lot. The, the, it it was very much like VR, VR was a very expensive thing to get at the time. This is long before like every every kid had a Quest Two. This was you know a handful of development units out there that were a couple thousand dollars. Mm. Um, and the to find someone in VR actually was a whole thing, and to find someone in full body when that first started to show up on the scene was e even rarer at the time because it was just. They're like, wait, you can move your legs? What? That's crazy. <laughs> now it's How would you pay for that? Mm. Now, yeah. now it's like that with face tracking. And those uh, <laughs> other, like the haptic suits and stuff. Yeah, I, I could totally see face tracking doing the same kind of arc that like Full Body did with VR chat, where, you know, as technology gets better and more things come out and more projects get made, that it becomes more affordable and... You know, it all starts out with with um, hacky, janky, um, you know, user built stuff, and then over time it gets better as the game integrates more and more of it. Mm. Isn't there a few headsets out that have face tracking? Like there's the Vive i Pro, and then I think the new Quest Three Pro has some face tracking too, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, the yeah the what is it the Vive i Pro and uh, quests pro have face tracking there's a couple other ones out there like pimax has a face tracking module and i know you can get like there's a custom project to like add face tracking to basically every headset but it's in its infancy it's not yet fully developed for everyone to kind of go tinker with it yeah. um infrared or infrared lasers are not for everyone to go mess with yet <laughs> What's but, wrong with pointing infrared lasers in your eyeballs? Nothing could ever go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would just add more, ni more nightmare to my eyes being already fucked. I already wear bifocals. Why not add a fucking more shit to it? Might straighten out my eyes. What the hell? I'll look like an alien when I'm done. <laughs> well, isn't that the fun part, though? You get to hopefully not blind yourself with infrared lasers and cameras in your headset and then maybe just maybe you'll be able to see your own eyeballs before you lose your vision <laughs> God. Yeah. Uh, hey it, it at is. least on the bright side line hey you go to the doctor and go hey you know those dots that you see in my eyes i've seen them too now but just by the laser setup <laughs> yeah. i can see all those dots every day day in day out why because i can actually see my eyes the back of my eyes i mean <laughs> It'd be like staring in the sun, but with a head or, or a ten pound potato strapped to your face. <laughs> strapped to your head. <laughs> it, it, it's almost even closer to staring into an invisible sun, where you don't know you're going blind until it's too late. <laughs> even better. <laughs> Definitely not scary. Don't worry. No, 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 no. How'd you lose your eyesight? How'd you lose your eyesight? You just born that way? No, put VR noises hit me. The That'd funny thing is, I don't think people will know if well, most common people will know, oh, it's the lasers I put in my headset. They'll probably think, I'll oh, just using my VR for a couple weeks and now I can't see anything. I probably have a disease. <laughs> and they're like, you should try out my headset. Look, you could even move your eyeballs. It's so cool. And then they make other friends go blind trying it too. <laughs> yeah, pass pass yeah, the it, buck. Pass the buck. Yeah, it, it's too DIY at this point to like trust people to source their own parts. So if, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't do it yet. But it is coming to the point where it is starting to get like people are building purpose-built modules with reliable parts. And, mm. you know, hopefully we'll actually see people start making little modular kits for different headsets and whatnot yeah. that are actually viable and not just build it yourself. Mm. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like that line, you know, guess what? I actually wrote my name on the back of the tree back there. Went through me and it, got, and it wrote on the tree behind me my name. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Didn't even have to use a pocket knife. Well, at least in terms of face tracking, there are some bigger headset companies paying attention to the VR chat scene. 
like obviously Meta is if they're putting it in their newer headset models. Vive is. And I think Apple headset, the expensive 3000 whatever has face tracking, but I don't think it's meant for VR. Yeah. <laughs> like all things Apple does, they are not meant for their target audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, but yeah, it is. It is going to be interesting to see when that starts to become the the new like standard where everyone has face and mouth tracking and they can just see with much more expressive animations and interactions and just actually see what's going on with people more. Yeah. Well, at least with eye tracking too, when it comes to headsets, that uh, there are some headsets that are like I've, some people are making talks of about with eye tracking they can very specifically render what you're looking at only with little bits of fuzz on the outside so it takes up less power. It could be of better, higher quality, which is also a really cool feature. Imagine having like 4K textures and like a Quest level headset because it's only rendering what your eyeballs are looking at. Yeah, I think it's foveated rendering and yeah. dynamic LOD is the terms that people are using for it. It is, it is very interesting. Um... I've I've I know VR has been poking at it a couple times, but hasn't fully wanted to commit to implementing it. But they they did they do tests. It's fun. Hmm. Um, would be interesting to see where it goes and hmm. whatnot once once we can actually afford to have eye tracking <laughs> in every headset. Yeah, but it'd be great for something like the Quest, where it's already hardware limited on almost all specs. Yeah, though. So at least with Quest, if you hook it to a PC or even have it connected to virtual desktop, it can still see and do a lot, which is still impressive in and of itself or just a little link and it still has the ability to access that even if it's not there by standard. But at least also with the Quest Pro, Quest 3 Pro coming out, it has the ability to see a lot of PC shaders. I was looking at some people who are using it and apparently on the standalone has the ability to see some PC shaders. Apparently they've, it looks like they've done some updates to it since Quest 2 at least. They, they're they working on it. Um, but it, I know their shaders have been updated that, that you're allowed to use on Quest um, recently. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a while before anything actually really comes out that's going to change the benchmark of the Quest 2 currently. Yeah. Just kind of just kind of how it is for the next like probably three years. <laughs> yeah. There is some standalones yeah. being worked on though. I know Vi uh, Valve is working on one, Vive is working on one, Pimax, Pico. Uh a whole bunch of companies now are dipping into the whole standalone headsets. Most of them though look really thin. I think the Vive XR is one mm -hmm. of those that's like ski goggle size. Yeah, yeah. I I know like in a lot like a lot of people kind of in the maker scene have been theorizing that VRChat's new mobile phone Android Alpha might eventually turn into a, just a generic APK for anything Android to run and they might add like head tracking support and remote controller support and whatever and might actually make it so you can play VRChat on anything you can install Android on, which would be interesting. Google Cardboard finally has a chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not, not the shutter oh, button. Boy. Oh, no. Click, click. No. Click, click. <laughs> Hurry up. Get the stoppers in. Hurry yeah. up. Don't, don't. Oh, man. The, the dog chewed my headset. Got, how's that? It's got dog teeth in it on the cardboard. Okay. <laughs> I can only imagine once Google Cardboard players hit hit VR chat, there's going to be such a reckoning on those poor people. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. It's true uh, though. Questies are made fun of all the time. Once you get the Google Cardboard people, it's going to be a whole new ball game. Oh my god. Oh, my god. oh Christ. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you holding yours together with model glue and duct tape? I got another cardboard box for my computer. I'll fix it. Mm. I'll be okay. Well, 
at least with Quest, there's a, a financial benchmark, so the amount of people who can or will be able to get into it at least gets some uh, deterrence for a lot of people. But if you could like put your headphone into a Google Cardboard and look around because it's spot available, oh dear lord, the the, the squeakers. Oh god, the squeakers. <laughs> uh, uh, it'll be like the day after Christmas. <laughs> no, not after yeah. Christmas, please. Not day after Christmas. Oh, Christmas Christ, is coming, nuts. Raptor. There's a new Quest headset that hit the I market, know. Raptor. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I went and got my laptop when I came here where, where I'm at and everything else like this because the nurses let me go. Um, they... I sat there and was looking to look at the new the new Quest Three that was sitting there, and there were six kids staring at it. Six kids staring at this <laughs> headset. And I'm going, oh shit, oh shit, we're all in trouble now. Yeah, it was funny. Mom was mom comes around. You have to wait until Christmas. That I heard Christmas. That's what I'm getting at. Christmas. I don't know if they were all her kids or what. That's all I know. Well. To be fair, Raptor, every Christmas since the Quest 2 come out, there's been an influx of people, not just like kids, but also adults. It seems like every Christmas is an influx mm -hmm. of maybe a couple hundred to a couple thousand people every year in Christmas like clockwork. And I'm not surprised. And with the newer headsets that are out now, especially the new XR Elite, the Quest 3, Quest 3 Pro, we may this year see a lot of kids come in on Christmas. A lot of kids. <laughs> every, every, every time. <laughs> time yep. to hide in your private worlds and only go to your events <laughs> and to never see a public world again for the next three months. <laughs> At least the Black Cat, uh, you... Murder 4, and uh, Among Us. <laughs> yeah. The, the world I avoid anyway. <laughs> but yeah, luckily... Um, with the big wave of December rolling rolling past, it's usually a fun time to like help people who are brand new to the game. Who are like, oh, I want to yeah. start making stuff. This is cool, and it means that I'm gonna get be busy for a couple months immediately after as well, just mm. because there's a bunch of new makers wanting to join the scene. Yeah, and at least with the quest, that is an added bonus. Every year we get that influx. There's more people like. Who would see people like yourself making a world or an avatar like I want to do that, and then we have a whole new influx of people who are making content. This is one of the things I am not surprised why VR chat's always like up on the upper echelons of like stability for VR markets. Is there's so many people building stuff here, and every year there's an influx on Christmas, and maybe a third of them want to do something in VR, whether it's videos, making avatars or worlds, dancing, DJing, or something. And off VR chat goes, getting a whole new influx of content for free. Oh, for sure. And like I strongly believe anyone who has the drive to want to make content can definitely go and just can do it. There's enough there's enough people that hang out and will will tell you how and what to make that will I definitely at least guide you in the right direction to doing something that is in custom in your own way. Mm. However that is. There's a lot of people in VR chat across a lot of the different avenues you could go as creating VR content that'll gladly just help you. Like I've talked with a couple of DJs here in the VR chat scene, Raptor and I both, and a lot of them say like people in the scene will will show them. Like this is what you do. This is what I suggest you get. This is the programs. Here's how they work. And the same thing with Avatar and world creation. There's so many Discord groups and via different VR chat groups are like, this is what you want. There's people like yourself who also go out and help people as well. So many different avenues of people, depending on whatever it is you want to do. And I'm glad there's people such as yourself who do that for the new people. Because, let's be honest, learning new tools is not easy. Especially if it's Unity or, or Blender. I feel so bad for you. <laughs> that was a fourth yeah. wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It is so like there's a, there's a lot to it, but there's definitely at least a standard path that people tend to take mm. to to get to the point of knowing what they want to make. Yeah. Um, and 
with VR chat because you can kind of specialize. You can kind of just pick a path and kind of follow it and then meet a bunch of people in spaces nearby you to help either fill in the gaps or collaborate or ask advice or whatever. I, I know I have many friends who who will come by, who come to me and they're like, oh, I want to do this and can you help me with this project? And they're, mm. they're pretty they're pretty good makers, but they they only know how to make texture edits or um, different kind of like simple animations and their their client wants them to make like a uh, funny spinning prop or a gun they can reload or something and I'm just like oh yeah no problem and then we just sit in a call for like an hour or two or mm. they send me the project and I go and build it myself because friends mm. I, I'm glad that VRChat allows this level of creativity with people whether you're making avatars of yourself or even like figure out ways to add realistic uh, laser lighting programs into a world so you could do that wild stuff. I'm glad VRChat at least allows people the ability to do it. It's almost to the point of you can think it, you can build it, which is great for like a community run platform. Yeah. Uh, def I definitely appreciate anyone who builds worlds because that is something I've never touched. <laughs> it is it is so much and there you can do so many things and I applaud you, but just not my specialty. <laughs> mm. I've talked with some people who build worlds and say the exact same thing about avatar makers. Like there's some some of so there within like the Unity creation scene, I've noticed if you go worlds or avatars, usually the opposite will be rough for you to learn. And a lot of the times you're like, nope, I've already learned how to put in all these walls and physics colliders and know how uh, Udon script works. I gonna go learn the other stuff, and they'll specialize in worlds or other way around if you want to work on avatars and you look at the world side of things like what this is magic i don't want to learn magic <laughs> yeah it it it, def it definitely feels like magic in the most literal sense where once you know how it works it's not really that like surprising anymore uh, um like you'll you'll see a video of it's like oh look at this crazy thing that people are doing you kind of just look at it and you go they're doing this they're doing that doing this doing that cool but it, uh, it's not the thing i would do i'd probably do it this way this way this way and <laughs> once you know how to do it it's kind of revealing the curtain <laughs> especially with but things like to anyone who doesn't know it's Ooh. i was gonna oh, say yeah. Udon, Sorry, anyone... any coding or script like what you guys do worlds or whatever the script itself to me it just looks like magic script like if you go like D D or whatever there's like this is a wonderful magic language that makes things exist. That's exactly what to me programming is. <laughs> You're a wizard, yeah, cat boy. It, it, <laughs> it is very much like the D and D kind of equivalent of here's the wizard who knows how to do things, and then let, let me just hand this spell scroll to our barbarians so they can actually do something magical, but don't they don't need to know how how it was made. <laughs> just, here you go. Go cast a spell. <laughs> Hello, virtual barbarian. You take this spell scroll and point it that way, and then just use it, and it makes your problems go away. That's all you need to know at this point. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 very fun though to like just give make a fun little program and hand it to someone and be like, here you go. Here's the thing that fixes your very specific issue. Um, mm. there, there's a lot of them. I I know like we have a mutual friend who has like a Twitch. Twitch integration that, that I made for them um, that um, I just kind of threw together in like a week and it it's they pretty much use it every day that they that we hang out so oh wow well it's really nice that you you you, you did that for them I'm sure and it take, took a week I'm sure it's rough to build those really nice people like you do that yeah it's it's just mostly a lot of like putting things together it it's a lot of input output kind of things where you take uh, like how do i how do i get a message from here how do i convert it to this how do i put it this way and you kind of just break it down until you eventually have something that puts it out into vr chat and is usable or the reverse you take information from vr chat and put it somewhere else and do something with it to me you're speaking a foreign magic language I'm like the equivalent of the bard that speaks to people. I don't know your wizardry. That's a magic language. I don't speak. <laughs> yeah, that's, speak that's foreign fair. tongue. Don't understand. We go. We go over there and go. I don't speak it. This. 
supposedly this is a fireball spell. I just see lighting magical squiggles. <laughs> I cast comprehend language. Not... <laughs> Would that work in a programming sense? The way that spell is written? <laughs> I mean, you'd understand the literal sense of what they're saying. I don't... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would understand. Damn. <laughs> yeah. What has been some of the more fun things you've done with your knowledge since you started picking up all of this? Uh, I know one... So... There's a couple of fun little projects I've put together. I have, um, because with OSC and how it's program set, you have to have a program running on your computer. So you, you have kind of two options of building something creative and cool, which is build it all in Avatar on uh, Unity's um, uh, animator or build it with code in mind, assuming that someone's going to have that so that they can do it. So. Like face tracking is something where they they would need code running and like I don't know a simple little like avatar prop is something where they probably don't need code running. Um, I I've done both in most cases. I have fun avatar props like on this guy. I have a whole um built-in Simon Says game built entirely on avatar that doesn't require any extra like processing outside, mm. but. Um, I've also built funny things like, like I was saying before, with like the the Twitch integration that I made, mm. um, where yeah, it just it, it kind of just works. Um, there's a there's, there's many of things I, but I mostly find that because I'm mostly in the field of just teaching people how to make content, that the things I mostly enjoy making is the diagrams of telling them how things kind of go together. Okay. Um, all right. So what kinds of things have you ended up teaching people? What have been some of the more common things people want to know? Yep. <laughs> um, full, full body is dying. Oops. Full body is um, definitely has the connection problems. I get, I feel your pain. Well, that... <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's something. Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just gonna... <laughs> do -do -do. Mine all How the do time. Looks funny. <laughs> I'm doing the funny dance. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, let me just turn that off. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> um, what have been some of the more common questions and things people want to know from you when they come out to you? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of times it is common questions about, um, like how, how do you get started? Um, I, like they want to do something very specific and they want to know how to do it. They want to, they get like errors across, along the way because every avatar, when you start building it, will have some sort of error. Um, and just, just like things that like would make sense that would need to be a question like, Oh, how, why can't I see the SDK and what is, what do these buttons mean? How do I optimize something? And it, it's, it's all a case of generally learning as you go. Mm. Um, but for people who have, who've never touched any of this, opening a, a, a full fledged 3d engine, um, of unity and staring down how to make a, an avatar from scratch is very daunting to them. Mm. Um, so you often get people who are in this very complicated uh, engine that are pointing their phone at the screen, being like, I have these errors, help. <laughs> so. Let me make it do a thing. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I sympathize with them. I, I've, I've been in a similar scenario where like, it, it also just didn't work correctly or whatever. And I was bugging my friends who were knowledgeable at the time, being like, "How do I do any of this? Help!" Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is. It's definitely a. It's definitely a two way street of you know, you know. Once you start learning, you should definitely start like trying to trying to give back to the people who are who are coming up behind you, mm. passing it forward in a sense. And that's what VR Chat does really well. Is let's be honest, the internet doesn't have like ultra specific VR Chat tutorials that are up to date. Unless you like know what you're looking for, which a lot of the time it's 
not really there, but with people such as yourself making con or helping in person, at least it makes the whole process a little easier. Yeah, like I, like there's a couple of people that I know that were that are pretty big inspirations when I was first getting started. Like I know Zipbox was a a prevalent um, content creator for just how do you make content in VR chat, and a lot of their mm -hmm. simple tutorials are like pretty good and help me with some basic concepts when I was getting started and since then I now help out in their discord with people who need who have questions and want to know stuff oh wow so who is uh who is hitbox and how long is they how long have they been around I I don't remember when they when they started existing but they were they were a, a person who basically just puts out avatar tutorials and stuff um pretty pretty semi-regularly every couple months mm -hmm. um just basic things like here's how you make a toggle here's how you make um like a gesture here here's how you can set up a basic avatar and a lot of very simple stuff that you that a lot of new people would might need to know where even when i'm explaining more advanced stuff to people it's like yeah you should watch this video on how to make a simple toggle because all the information i'm going to explain is going to build on top of the knowledge of how to make that at least mm. So with a lot of the avatar and Unity stuff, if you know some of the basic stuff, it all compiles into other aspects of avatar creation or Unity creation. Yeah, for sure. It's a lot of it's a lot of almost like Lego, effectively. Where if you know if you know what can go on one side and what can go on the other side, you can kind of start building stuff to a bigger con contraption. Hmm. Um. And wh whatever you end up at the end being just a, a nice building or structure or creation that is pretty 100% like custom for what you've made. Okay. Very useful concepts such as, you know, how do I how do I use use these things? Well, you you take these ones, you put these ones on those ones and it just kind of builds upon it in a in a way which mm. is helpful. Okay. You know, I hope as VR continues and the metaverse quote unquote which I think it's it's a weird term for it, but the VR social platforms that come out to exist, I hope VR chat's still around because this whole thing of what you do and what all the other people who help teach people to get in, in, into the scene is one of the most amazing things about VR chat, in my opinion. The fact that people like yourself do it and help you provide fun little diagrams and things for people to use as resources, even what Hitbox does. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, um, like, and I'm sure that pretty much anyone who is a half decent maker or someone who up enjoys uploading content, if you're like brand new and you don't know what's going on, just going up and being like, how'd you make that thing? More often than not, people will be like, oh, I did this and this. And if you, after asking enough people, eventually you'll find someone who will sit down and walk you through every step along the way of here's how you make it. And here's, here's the full steps and you'll get in contact mm -hmm. with people. Hmm. Um, across the board for all of you, our chat, pretty much, no matter what your kind of interests are. Indeed. It's like most new people have to utilize the chat aspect of VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> what? Talking to people? I would never. Huh. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised at how many people who come into VR chat have some sort of like social anxiety or are hesitant to speak when it comes in. Although, this has been a really great resource for when I've heard a lot of people who are hesitant to talk to people, to get used to talking to people, especially with this little uh, anonymous thing you have as your representative in here. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, it's kind of one of those things where people either quit within the first week or never stop playing. There, there's kind of no in between where you like, you don't know what you're doing, you don't have anyone to talk to, and you don't really know what to do, and so you kind of stop, or you play, you meet a handful of, of cool people, and then you just continue for forever until you just mm. literally can't play anymore. Yep. It is very interesting. It is. You either become some form of uh, VR content creator, whether worlds or avatars, shaders, or whatnot. You get into the spicy side of things and learn dancing, or you make videos, and I don't think I've seen... Or you become a mirror dweller. There's that, too. 
that's an option. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you got to do the thing where you like lay down and put one 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 arm over your knee and sit in front of a mirror. That's that's how you play VR chat. Mm, indeed, because nothing <laughs> says VR chat and immersion like a mirror and staring at yourself for endless hours saying nothing or blasting music out of your mic. <laughs> That's no doubt. If you're blasting music, at least have an, have an OSC script to tell people what music it's playing. <laughs> yeah. You know, go the full, go full nine yards if you're going to do it. <laughs> There's an entire DJ yeah, go scene. balls, go balls to the wall. Mm. Right? Yeah. You know, I've got a technical question for you. The VR chat mirror that everyone knows mm -hmm. well, how does that, is that a shader or is that like some other technicality? Uh, it's technically different. It, it's basically a shader. It's basically, um, it, it's also kind of like the reverse because what it effectively does is it spawns, like it, it takes your position, then over the span of one frame will mirror it to the other side of it across a plane. And because it takes a, a fraction of a second to happen, you can actually manipulate that specifically to allowing it to do different things. Um, so you can actually have like, uh, you can have a specific setup with, that allows you to have a different view in the mirror compared to what you see in your first person view, or you can have shaders that interface with the mirror to do different things on the mirror axis, which is, it's interesting. Mm. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Indeed. One of the coolest things I saw someone do with the mirrors, have you seen the liquid mirrors? You can run your hands through it and it comes out with waves and ripples. That's a really cool mirror thing I've seen around. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember what the exact term is offhand, but it's like multi multi path distortion or something where it blurs it out over time or something. I don't know. Faders are hard. <laughs> but Indeed. I just I wasn't trying to ask you like how it works. I was just saying it's a cool thing I've seen. No. <laughs> it's if you are easily amused, it is one of the coolest easily amusable items to get lost in. Cool, you get to stare at yourself and make it look funny. <laughs> Mirror dwelling two point uh, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I think wow. Yeah, I think VR chat and the mirror is actually very it's very unique to like this game because you're you're never yourself. You're never gonna be a one to one representation of yourself. So it's always mm -hmm. it's always weird like looking down and seeing your arms are different or looking up and seeing that your face is different in the mirror. Mm. Or how a lot of avatars now will have like moving hair or if you have face tracking, your eyes will move, your mouth moves, and you look around and you yourself are some six five dude and instead you're like a th a three five dainty anime chick, you need to see yourself move as you move. I w I would love to sit with a down psychologist, and just understand the psychological effects and how that works, or the fascination in VR, because I think that'd be an interesting thing to know. Yeah, oh definitely, it's the very unique sort of scenario. Mm. VR chat in general, it, it is one of the things that drew me to it. Is just. You can be whatever you can upload to the game. And it's like, wow, that's cool. I'm going to be this thing for forever. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the same avatar I've had for almost four years now. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm the same way. I've had a similar variations. I used a Nanachi for the longest time, but then I, I grew up. But I've always been this exact same color pattern since I found an avatar I liked. So I'm, I'm ex almost the exact same way. One thing I don't understand yeah, is that I, I, people who avatar hop, I don't get it. I can't do it. It feels weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm so used to being at like three foot whatever level that as soon as I like get into a bigger avatar or scale up or something, I'm just like, this is weird. <laughs> I, hmm. I'm so used to like being know this height. Feeling. It's weird to like, yeah. Know that feeling big time. Uh, I've been wearing, since I've been on here for four years, I've been in nothing but small avatars. I've never, I get into one and I go right back to the small one. Mm. Just weird. Oh. Yeah. He's got peanut uh, butter on himself. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. looking at his chest going, I got something on me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Must be that. I my full body. That. Ah, that's it's fair. Fair. skitty yeah. sauce. It's all over him. Skitty, he got skitty sauce all over him too. While he was doing VR. Mm. 
that is another thing I, I I'd like to sit down at, with 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 a, a psych professional about as well is the dichotomy of associating yourself in VR chat or VR with a specific avatar because there are a lot of people who like use a like have a main avatar and that's how like they will talk to what they're known as and how how the mind can associate with that thing specifically yeah for sure um it it's one of those things where like um VR chat has a weird phenomenon called phantom sense where you basically can feel what is effectively virtual touches by just how they would interact with yourself i thought it was completely made up and everyone was lying until i got full body like working and i'm like there it is i huh weird <laughs> it's actually not unique to vr chat have you ever heard of phantom limb syndrome it's the exact same system uh mind system that makes that runs phantom limb is what runs phantom sense so like for example yeah. if i was to have my leg chopped off you could still feel some people will still be able to feel like an itch on the foot that doesn't exist anymore. And the mind can do the exact same thing here in the virtual sense, except it's with a body that it's not attached to. Yeah, for sure. It all all those fun psychological things of like phantom limbs and rubber hand experiment and all those things that like make people feel things or react in a way that they didn't expect, even though there's nothing there. That their your brain is gonna just kind of fill in whatever gaps it can't it can't immediately see. <laughs> You know, I wonder if the average VR chat user or the people who are pushing out the metaverse will look into the whole long term effects of like living in VR. Because we all have that one friend who eats, sleeps, and works inside VR chat or VR. And I wonder what the long term effects would be of that person, that kind of person outside of VR with a mind. Yeah, it would be. It would be very interesting, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, I, the psychology is something that's like hard for me to 100% grasp, but yeah, you know, it well, it's definitely an interesting thing to hear people like do actual research papers on it. There's actually been a few people who's done research papers about VR. Uh, there was one I know of. There's a lady from California. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Uh, if I can, if I'm smart enough, I'll look for it again and put it in the description. Check down there. If not, <laughs> comment at me. But there's a lady, or tell me what it is if you know. There's a lady who is looking up the whole sexual effects of VR interactions. And she went to a special research place in California for it. And they provide that service where you have like a vir virtual AI do stuff with you. And she did an entire psychological effect of it. Basically, the end had semi positive reviews about it, saying it's a good alternative and stuff of that nature. There's there's a whole bunch of others too, it's it's interesting, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. People definitely, people definitely have interesting tastes in in VR. That's for sure. Uh, Ain't that the I, truth? I, don't I learned a lot in VR, and I wish I didn't. <laughs> in that realm of things. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of the, a lot of the things oh, that I, I I'd never dabble in, but that's just personal preference. But you know. I'm not, I'm not opposed to writing code that interacts with the contact points in the game for reasons. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just write the code. I don't use anything. <laughs> There's a few worlds that help me learn certain terms like VOR that I wish I never had learned the term <laughs> to. <laughs> I, I knew that long before VR chat existed. <laughs> I did not. I didn't want to, but I did. I did not know what that was <laughs> until I came into VR chat. And it was also the first times where I could almost smell the VR when you hop into the stomach. Was that stomach acid <laughs> smell? And no. Uh... Just no. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, this is the fun thing about me, me being around VR chat for forever. Because, like, we're pretty much, like, I'm pretty sure that, you know, we're all in the furries and stuff and whatnot and do this stuff because funny animals, cool. I, I've been doing that for far longer than VR chats existed. Probably oh. like 12 years or something now. So <laughs> <laughs> it it's very fun, like, going to conventions and seeing the weird, like, shift in dynamic where at first it was like, like, oh, wow, I found someone that, I, like, I, I found someone who plays VR. That's cool. And, oh, you, you know, oh, you also 
play VR chat. That's cool. We should go play VR chat sometime when we get home and whatnot. To now it's being almost the reverse, being being, oh, I know you from VR chat. That's cool. And we, we I finally get to meet you in real life. It's a, it's a weird transition where it kind of just slowly switched the other way. Well, that's not entirely surprising with how much traction VR chats have gotten, especially in like the anime, furry, and nerd communities. Even outside of that, there's a few people who don't even do any of those things that come in here. I think they become a point where like VR social platforms will be a norm, like a place like maybe normal social platforms like X, Twitter, it, the thing. <laughs> because it's like here there is no real al algorithm to push stuff to to you. It's whatever world you hop into, the people you meet. It's a lot more natural yeah. versus like curated terror <laughs> I, I i like the just the 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 nonsense that is vr chat like it is, it's yeah. fun to just go into public worlds and just just hang out meet a bunch of people you've never seen and just get screamed at by some random kid it's part of the fun <laughs> indeed well it's it's also sort of part of the coming into vr chat experience when you're first new is you go into the black cat or drinking night or murder four or whatever it is you go into, and that whole look, meeting friends, and then eventually there'd be some community like the Antichrist community, Nova Redux, or Ancients that'll scoop you up. Like, that's a terrible place. Don't go to the Black Cat. Here are friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do that to people now. I go into public worlds, and I'm like, hey, you're cool. You're kind of cool to come talk with. You should come over here to this event and, like, come hang out with some cool people. And I, I tend to scoop people up now as well. <laughs> which is you know <laughs> how vr chat kind of full full circle effectively mm. you could go hang out here in the black hat listening to a kermit scream racial slurs <laughs> or did you know there are raves in here there's what follow me little newbie let me show you a side <laughs> of vr chat you didn't know existed and meet friends that are yeah looks at kermit normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, and and even like you would think that raves would only get like so far before they would stop people to innovate but then now we have audio link yeah which, like lets you interact with the world's audio which is extra crazy <laughs> like who, even, who would have thought that would have come out today even crazier than that there are a lot of people who do like work in lights and stuff outside of vr like for like events and concerts and when i've heard a lot of people from that community are coming in bringing their knowledge and spreading that in here as well, which makes the worlds look so much cooler. Like the whole entire s people coming in, bringing their knowledge outside of you are like programmers such as yourself or some lights tech or whatever is really cool to see. And the rave scene still has got so much cool shit over there. And I sw if you ever have ever had the chance, go visit them. Please do. There's some really cool places like Rave Till the Grave. There's Sanctum and some other places. If you ever had the wonderful luxury of going, please do. They're a fantastic experience. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, like I, I haven't gone to many raves, but they are they're very interesting to to like go and see and hang out with and mm. see. And it's one of those things where it's mostly been friends are over here. I'm gonna go see some friends. All right, guess we're going raving. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm glad there are different things to do in VR chat, like raving or building worlds and avatars, playing Among Us, whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> At least there's options here outside of like mirror dwelling for hours with other mirror dwellers. And the black cat, well, a Kermit screams racial slurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know, especially for me, who who like plays VR chat and does crazy stuff or helps people constantly. I probably spend more time out of VR chat helping people with VR chat than I do in VR chat actually doing stuff. <laughs> so, well, that's fair. Well, yeah. at least you're involved in some way, which is still amazing to see. Especially knowing there's one other person out there helping people learn, which also means me being a little selfish here. Gets to see more cool shit out there, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate. Like, because I'm not the only person who helps out with people. I definitely appreciate oh, anyone yeah. else who is in the same space of just kind of helping out. Like, I know most of the the standard people are in the 
the VR chat server who help out all the time. Mm. All volunteers just doing it because it's fun. Indeed. That's one thing I've I yeah. would like to understand more is why does the average VR chat player so willing to volunteer so much time for to do a thing? Like for example, club staff. Not a lot of people don't make money doing it, but they sacrifice a couple of days or multiple days a week running security, running their lights. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. building avatars and worlds is so much time. It's like a full time job. I'm glad they do it because you get cool shit. So much cool stuff, but yeah. that just kind of surprises me that a lot of people volunteer that much time. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's a lot of fun though, just to like see other people like be really excited about the platform that you spent so much time in. Mm. I guess because like, you know spending a, like an hour or so on someone who has an issue with their avatar and they keep coming back being like, okay, I have a new issue, new problem, and then this and that. Eventually, once you finally run out of issues, they're like, it's finally done. Thank you so much. This was a great experience. And it's just like, yes. perfect. <laughs> exactly <laughs> what I was looking for. A happy ending. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's so much. Just You know, it's, it's nice to see people be excited for the thing because like, you know, if you... And like, even if it's something simple, it's nice to just give back, being like, "Oh, oh, I, I think I know how to do do this and this." So, mm. you know, with especially in the VR chat server, we have a lot of people who are who are fairly new to helping out, who kind of give their best advice and whatnot. They're not always perfect, but there's usually someone lurking in the shadows, being like, mm, "You probably want to do it this way. It's not a bad way to do it th- that way, but this way is probably a bit more performant or better for your FPS." Mm. Indeed. At, at least in places like the VR chat server and what you're doing, the YouTube channels that are out there, at least now, from what I understand, it's a lot more resources for people to turn to to learn the thing. Yeah, there definitely a lot of good public resources and a lot of good public outreach spots to uh, just get, get advice. Hmm. Especially even in VR chat itself, you can just go up to people and just be like, hey, that's a cool thing you've made. How how would you go about making that? Could I could I make something more like this? Would would this work? Hmm. You know, just try it. See how it works. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a wild question now because I enjoy asking mm-hmm. this question. What has been your first true VR chat experience? If you need an example, I'll gladly give you one. Um I hmm. <laughs> I think the the first like proper time I've had like a VR chat experience was when I when I first kind of got like snatched up from just public world hopping um and running around um a long long-term friend of mine uh was was like was like oh I see you're wearing the same avatar base that I, that I'm wearing and whatnot and it was it was this one uh, so <laughs> He's like, oh, we we have a we have a whole event that we go to that's all based around this avatar thing. You should come join. And I'm like, sure, that sounds like fun. And then you know, I've known him for like three, four years now. Um, he's been a good friend of mine for forever, and I still go to that event from time to time. Oh wow! But it's it it it's very much like the first time I felt like this is probably the most VR chat thing that's happened to me. <laughs> okay. That's actually a lot more wholesome some of the answers I've gotten over time. <laughs> <laughs> My first VR chat thing was I I learned how to use no. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first true VR chat experience was uh I've said this a lot and I'm sorry. You know, I should turn into a drinking game at this point. But I in, in our earlier days of VR chat, I wanted to see what Murder Four was, so I hopped in a lobby, and there was a bunch of questies and anime girl avatars moaning on each end. That was my first true VR chat experience. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that sure is VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> it, is an experience. I don't know. It's kind of just it's kind of the background noise of VR chat to me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, VR chat's one of the few times I say two things simultaneously. That's so cool. And oh God, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there, there's a lot of those things that I've seen. And I've gone, why did someone spend time making this? 
what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys jumping into it? Why are you enjoying it? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. There's been a lot of times I've had those experiences. So I'll be, try and join a friend. It's like, okay, cool. What are you up to? Nope. I don't want a beer anymore. I need an adult. <laughs> uh, yeah. I. There, there's, there's been lot, lots of weird scenarios where like, I'll you'll be in like a world just hanging out with some friends and suddenly two of your friends disappear and you're like, where did they go? What? And you know, yeah. turns out there's a, there's a locked private room somewhere in the world and whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time to go back to the talking to people. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there's been a couple of times where I unknowingly joined a friend who's on green or blue and they're doing the deed <laughs> in a world that should be private uh, but it's not so hey cool you're doing the virtual wrestling okay i'm gonna go back to the black cat instead <laughs> uh, vr chat vr chat indeed that's just how it is <laughs> vr chats are the few places you can see awesome cool things things that make you question a whole lot of things and then vr chat I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. At, at least on the other side, it's it's very nice to have a platform where, you know, your, your professional experiences outside of the game actually apply to inside the game all of a sudden. It's not just you're, you're kind of just spending time doing stuff to do stuff. You know, you're not farming 600 goblins to finish this quest. You're just, you're building a thing because that's the thing you wanted to build and you know how to do it because you know, you're a 3D artist or something. And the NVR chat, a lot of the time, will side on the freedom of expression of the people making it. Like, I've, I've even seen them double down a few times on allowing the community to build and do the community things, even if it means it may look bad to their investors. Like, for example, the groups. And then they add the ability for groups to moderate things instead of hard, more hardcore laws or rules in the VR chat. Yeah. And I'm glad that the they do that because it allows the a lot of the people here to just be themselves, which I guess is the essence of VR chat too. Even if you're a Kermit screaming slurs. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And like when, when you've been around VR chat as long as I have and interacted with their discord as much as you, as much as I have, you kind of, you get to kind of know some of the people behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but like in most cases, they're just, they're just chill. They don't really care what you do as long as you're not really hurting someone. Mm. So as long as it's just, Trying to, they're trying to find the best solution that that doesn't seem intrusive in most cases, which is, mm. you know, I, I respect that. Same. I can also respect that. It's good to see that they're allowing their community to be themselves, whatever it may look like, and they stick to it, which is not what you see a whole lot of most internet platforms. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they often even try to build off of, like, community-built um, projects and assets. Like, they made it easy easier for audio link to to be like work at all and they made sure that it wouldn't break during a specific update um mm. so that worlds that already had audio link wouldn't just randomly break all of a sudden and require a re-upload um mm. or when avatar scaling got introduced they they talked to Fernanda, the person who made go go loco for scaling um and and they talked to him about it, about, oh, this is probably going to break. And he's like, cool, I don't have to maintain this anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. other stuff like VRCFT, the face tracking software, um, they talked to them about how, what's the best way for, you know, in, in, inter interfacing with um, native eye tracking, because that got added to the game eventually. Um, mm. And they figured out a, be a best way to do that. And they, 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 kind of, they kind of reach out and talk to people amongst the community, which is a lot of fun. It's actually really awesome as well because there's a whole bunch of people in the community working on various subjects. And when I've seen like various other platforms and v even VR games, it's not social platforms. VR chat's one of the few that'll very quickly adopt whatever new tech thing is out. Face tracking, haptic suits, full body when it became a thing. And it's like, it's one of the few places you can guarantee, I want to try the new thing and you can go and try the new thing. It may take some work, putting in lasers into your headset with some weird camera system that follows your <laughs> eyeballs and hopefully you don't gain a new medical condition. But at least 
you know you can try it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, if, if you're someone who's a tinkerer, it is it is a, basically just an infinite sandbox. You have mm. everything at your disposal to just build whatever you want. It is a lot of fun. Um, and like even for me, because I, I tinker with things, I program on you know pretty much a daily basis. It's a lot of fun just to be like, ooh, look at this thing they've done. wonder how I could make it do this and just put in something that, you know, is a brand new experience to the game. So what is it, uh, do you, uh, was one of your favorite examples of that, of making a thing, do another thing that you did? Um, I, I think one of my favorite experiences that I hadn't experienced until I made it was, was the 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 chat box thing that I made for Anti, the where, where it is basically it takes the Twitch chat and then pipes it over to VR chat's in-game chat box, and it um it basically was a whole new experience for a lot for me to be able to see and interact with the streamer's chat in game without having to like have it open on like an overlay or something. Mm. I could just interact with them directly and didn't have to like really really just you know, have extra steps along the way to, you know, communicate with them. Hmm. Well, that's a really cool thing, because I saw, I joined an anti on one of the times he was using it, and it was a really interesting thing to see, especially when chat's trying to talk to you. It's a, yeah. it's actually really cool that, that you made that. It's, I'll say that, it was really awesome. It was fun. Yeah. See it in action. You know, it, it, it all, it all started from just a simple conversation of like, of, developer standard experience developer of just wow th this thing is taking up 20 seconds of my time what if i just built what if i just spent like two weeks and put together a whole thing that would do it for me what if i spend a lot more time than it's worth to <laughs> just do it immediately <laughs> in game so i don't have to worry about it mm. and then i did <laughs> because yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's still a really cool thing and I think it's awesome, and now people who are with Anti can see if Anti is running it, can interact with his own chat. So it kind of makes the whole community feel more connected. I guess that's a good way to put it. Everyone's inter yeah. interacting yeah, with each other. Very nice. It's it's a nice bridge between like a lot of streamers I've seen usually end up just kind of muting themselves and talking to their chat, and then going back to the game where they're talking to other people. And it's kind of a it's like this weird like non bridge where you're kind of just sitting there as a user, just looking at the streamer being like, yay. <laughs> yeah. um, where you're like, nothing's happening and you're just kind of nodding along, wait, wait, waiting for them to like, come back to, you know, <laughs> you in game. So I'm just like, Oh, what if I just, what if I could just talk to their chat directly and just, just hang out. Then they don't have to mute themselves. And then all the chat just kind of seems sort of harmonious. Mm. And it kind of worked. Although you also are putting a lot of trust in your chat to not say some outrageous <laughs> things to. <laughs> Luckily, it's not monitored in game, so. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working on it. I'm putting. I'm putting it. Maybe putting a way to add filtering into it or whatever, so that mm. it, it won't have that issue. But, you know. Work in progress development software takes Ooh. forever. <laughs> Doesn't the VR chat chat box have like a language filter and there is built in as well? So at least no. No, not even all not all. It is it is just it just lets you send whatever. As long as it's valid English characters, you can send it. It doesn't care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Never mind. <laughs> it's it's not even monitored. Like VRChat doesn't pull that data at all. They they just it's just kind of there. So as long as you're not like saying something that would get you in trouble normally, then it should be fine. Mm. And well, they're they're pretty lenient, and they'll understand if you if if an issue like that crops up. Well, I believe also I've heard some people say like if you're in an instance of a world, a lot of those instances are monitored and or recorded and sent to some like server farm thing if that's true or not i don't know like they're most of it's like not monitored. not from what i've heard no um vr chat from from like vr chat very explicitly says in their like terms of service that you know we're, we're not gonna 
like anything that is adult content, we will we will ban the people for that or whatever. But then they say in their community guidelines, as long as you're doing this in a space that is not public and everyone is consenting to being there, mm. then it's probably going to be fine. And I've I've heard that as long as but they, they only act upon request. So if you're not being reported for it, then you're not going to be mm. like looked into. So I think a, what well, a lot of that refers to is like adult videos. Cause I've heard a lot of people who do like VR chat, spicy videos and yeah. then their accounts get blipped out. And I think that's what I think they're hinting on is not in game actions, but recorded actions put on the internet. Yes. <laughs> Once it, once it puts a, a block on VR chat, they'll they'll look into it. Um, but mm. you know, if if it, it's if it's just a thing of a bunch of people hanging out, being friends or whatever, um, then you know it's fine. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was referring to a very specific kind of video that they'll be monitoring the adult side of things because I've yeah <laughs> they do crack down on that and as well and. I'm kind of half half. People should be allowed to express themselves, but at the exact same point, it makes VR chat look bad. Yeah, and you know, I, 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 I don't agree or disagree with what they're doing. It, it's kind of actually very lenient compared to most places where, yeah, you know, they'll just kind of crack down on it if it happens at all or whatever. So, eh, but they, <laughs> in, the, in VR chat, as long as as long as you don't get reported, then no one really cares. So that's that's good. But, um, I mean, for me, it's one of those things where, like, you know, Twitch chat says something terrible. Well, they're not gonna immediately look for that. They're not. They're not gonna immediately know that that happened in through their logs or whatever. They're just gonna yeah. see, oh, but like, like, you know, they'll only see it once it gets reported that this might happen. So <laughs> that's it. So, and I, I even try to update my stuff so that it. it eventually becomes better and has better filters and whatever so mm. if there's an issue i try and address it but I hope you don't know. feel like i'm trying to call you Can't out on that i'm not trying to do that no. at all <laughs> no i'll just kind of say that like allowing that bridge between like vr chat player and the streamer's chat is a lot of trust you're putting into the chat in that moment <laughs> communicating yes. with your friends is that was my only comment and it's good to see that Andy yeah. trusts his chat that much. <laughs> yeah. Um and I, I don't know, I like it. I think it's a I think it's a really fun experience. I've sent this yeah. to a couple other friends that stream and they seem to enjoy the, the two way communication mm. um amongst this. And I, I managed to do fun fun little demos um that ended up being kinda of useful during like times when my computer was having issues, but because mm. my mother also plays this game, and so she was playing the game, and my computer was uh, having a power supply issue. So I just, I just went into her chat box and, and used that on her computer. So mm. yeah. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of use her chat box directly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what? how did your mother get in here? Do you guys play together regularly? Yeah, um, she she kind of got in because I was like, "Hey, we have this fun event thing that we're, that we do every couple every week or so, and you know, I have extra headset hardware and stuff because I've been playing VR for so long. You should come, you should come along and come just hang out." And so they started coming along to events and hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, she likes it. She thinks it's a fun little escape from reality. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of just a fun event, little thing that she likes to do. Mm. Well, that's really cool that you're you shared that with her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I definitely. I like it. It's fun. She she tries her best. That's all, you all can, she can really do. But that's all I can only really ask of her. And the fact that she's here with you, trying a thing you enjoy, at least that's good for both of you. If both of you enjoy it, you do it together. Yeah. Yeah, we we have a lot of these fun little things between me and me and my mother that, like, she's starting her own graphic design business, and I've been helping her out with that and writing stuff in back end for code and whatnot, so that she can have it be more efficient and you know it kind of just kind of helps out along the way. And you know, we 
just it's just nice to collaborate with people you know. Mm. Mm. And at least in things like in VR chat specifically, there's a lot of people that will collaborate with you and help you out with things. And I've learned that over time, and it's amazing to see how helpful VR chat is amongst itself. It's not like I've heard some stories about like chill out or neos or people are very <laughs> reclusive <laughs> on a lot of those things. And it's wholesome to yeah, see. Yeah, for sure. Um, like for example, you and yeah, your mom I, I love... and everything here. Yeah, I I love collaborating with people. It is it's very fun to like get a team together to make something. Mm. Um, I know. Like only only slightly, I was helping a friend out with one of their spookality uh, uh, avatars, just kind of make, helping them make some animations for something they were doing. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's fun because they they had they had me helping them with with animations. They had uh, someone else who was doing modeling and rigging, and uh, uh, they were doing texture texture work and stuff, and just mm. a small little team just building an avatar for a little uh, avatar jam that. VR chat was hosting. Oh, well, that's really awesome. So, I'm gonna put a cut to this here, like an almost an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, I could be wrong. <laughs> Is there anywhere people can find you if they wish to find you? Uh, mostly I'm on I'm on Discord. Uh, I am just Catboy. I have the, the that name directly. Um, but if people if people need to reach out and ask me questions or whatever, they totally can. I don't mind getting DMs from anyone. Okay. Again, thank you very much for your time, Catboy. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to speak with you and taking this mm -hmm. time out of your day. It's great to know. Yes, it is. It's great. Yeah. And on thank you very much. <clears throat> you're welcome. And on that note, folks, if you see Catboy, just pat him on the head and say, I seen you. You have a good one, folks. Take care. Bye.